hard to think of an acquisition, a takeover, that has really got the public's attention in the way that the Cadbury Craft takeover of recent weeks really got the British public into action. It's very rare to see these things on the front pages of pretty much every newspaper. But that was how it was, largely because of fears of what Craft would do with this great British institution that was the nation's chocolate maker. Now, one person who was particularly sceptical was Professor Joseph Lampel, a professor of strategy here at Cass Business School. He forecast very early on that a craft takeover would lead to factory closures and cuts. And within a week, he was proved right. The factory at Bristol is to close down. I asked Professor Lampel if he felt vindicated. Well, it's, it's obviously... I, I'm feeling kind of uh, surprised that there were, didn't we wait for a decent interval uh, to make those announcements. I never really uh, put much faith in the uh, declarations and promises were made before the, the merger. But I thought they would wait six months or eight months, and just a week. And just a week, you know, which, which I think uh, uh, would certainly create a lot of political, add to the political anger that is expressed in various quarters, and ultimately really make the craft's position in Britain uh, less tenable than it was before. You've described this as a great deal for hedge funds. What did you mean by that? Well, it's, it's an interesting game we are seeing in many uh, acquisitions, which is that. Uh, as Kraft mounted a, a bid for uh, a Cadbury, okay, and it became very clear that they were willing to go the whole way okay, and keep increasing their offer, uh, hedge fund uh, basically began to buy the shares uh, with a view to making a killing when, when the deal went through. So they made a very astute decision, judging the commitment of Kraft to increase their offer by 15 20% even more, and there became really a collusive re game to some extent between Kraft and the hedge fund. The harder Kraft pushed, the more the hedge fund bought, the more Cadbury management understood that eventually they, they will not be able to resist that. So it was a good deal for, for the hedge fund and it was one that they participated in. So there was nothing that the Cadbury management could have done to stop this? Cadbury management was looking for white knights. They wanted somebody else to come in, basically, and make a counter-offer, a reasonable counter-offer that they could present to the shareholders and accept without being swallowed by a global conglomerate, food conglomerate. Unfortunately, they were not given enough time to do it, and it does suggest that you know, they would have been wiser if they had looked at the bottom line, looked at the environment, and prepared for such an eventuality by identifying more promising merger uh, partners in Europe, probably. So maybe one lesson from the Cadbury Craft takeover, the companies that might find themselves the subject of a hostile bid in the future, maybe they should be lining up a white knight way ahead of any bid actually emerging. British companies, certainly. In the United States, uh, corporate boards have all sorts of other ways of, of uh, hampering, if not entirely stopping, uh, hostile bids, poison pills, etc. But in the UK, those such, such things are not allowed by law. And, and uh, staff management and boards are much more vulnerable to, uh, as part of fiduciary obligations to accept offers which are clearly in the interest of the shareholders in terms of return on investment. So if they do prepare well in advance to have to identify, negotiate, approach, sound out, potential white knights which are strategically more compatible, it's probably a wise thing to do. Yeah. Of course, Cadbury were in talks with all sorts of potential white knights, most famously Hershey of the United States, but none of them ultimately came up with the cash. Does that maybe tell us that Kraft didn't get quite the good deal it thought it got? The two ways to look at the craft deal, okay, from a shareholder point of view, that's say craft shareholders, and from a synergy point of view. Craft, in fact, doesn't really strongly argue that in the short term they're creating value for their own shareholders, because they're taking so much debt and they're paying, they up their cash offer relative to, the, to, to stocks. That, uh, that Warren Buffett's uh, hostile response to the entire deal, I think, is symptomatic of, of what is going to happen to the share value, and he's certainly somebody who knows. But Irene Rosenfeld uh, really argued the, the synergy argument. She argued that uh, in the medium to long term, the, the, the synergies between uh, Cadbury and uh, Kraft are such that it will deliver value, maybe not in eight months, but certainly in two or three years. Now, unfortunately, the synergy argument is a very dubious one. It's hypothetical and speculative, but we shall have to see. You speak of Irene Rosenfield, the chief executive of Kraft. Of course, in so many mergers and acquisitions, there's talk of hubris. 
Was this an acquisition too far for Kraft? I think it may well be an acquisition too far. The Uberis hypothesis, uh, as it's known in, in the strategy, uh, has been demonstrated uh, for, for many uh, organizations, many CEOs. Now, I don't know the, the individual personally, and one doesn't want to go into too much depth psychology. But one thing we do know from other examples of other companies is that when you have an aggressive, tough, tough-minded CEO that goes on an acquisition binge, they do very well for quite a while because they, are, uh, they look at things very carefully, but they, they tend to increase their ambition, the scope of their ambition, hubris in other words, and go for larger and larger acquisitions and are more likely to get into kind of a, a bidding game where they suffer the winner's curse. In other words, they, offer, they, they, they pay too much, they overestimate the synergy possibilities, and they underestimate the difficulty of integrating uh, two companies together. And it may well be that this is exactly what's going to happen in this case. And that was Professor Joseph Lampel speaking to us about the Cadbury Craft Takeover. Don't forget, there is now a Cast Talks blog, the address alexritson.com. Your comments very welcome and your ideas for future editions of Cast Talks.